My name is Felix I.D. Konote Ahulu. I'm a Ghanaian and I am Dr. Kweje Agri, Distinguished Professor of Human Genetics in the University of Cape Coast in Ghana and also Consultant Physician Genetic Counselor in Sickle and other hemoglobinopathies. In, um, in London. There is no more important matter for Africans at home and in the diaspora and for non-African populations in the Mediterranean, the Middle East and India and their descendants all over the world, spread all over the world their descendants and our descendants, no more important matter than what we are going to talk about now. A question, how can we prevent sickle cell disease occurring? The CANAD, K-A-N-A-D in Genetic Counseling and Voluntary Family Size Limitation is the method uh, which I use to help those who um, inquire about the future of their children in this way. Forty years ago, at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital in Accra, I saw a Ghanaian family who posed a question that has been repeated many, many times over the past four decades in my consulting rooms. And the question is this, how do we stop this happening again in our children? The family that I saw was quite unique in medical history, so unique that we published their story in the British Medical Journal as part of medical memoranda on 8th of March 1969, just over 40 years ago, volume 1, pages 607 to 612. This unique article described a husband with sickle cell disease, not sickle cell trait, as I will explain later, but sickle cell disease, married to a lady who also had sickle cell disease, not sickle cell trait, with the result that all, and I mean all 12 children of theirs, had abnormal hemoglobin disease, of whom four had died. They gave us permission to publish their picture in the British Medical Journal. They were fancies of the fancy tribe around Cape Coast. So they knew that the disease was called Inwiwi, Inwiwi, N-W-I-I, W-I-I, or in English as cold season rheumatism, or as we now know, 
is called sickle cell disease. Never in the history of medical archives had it been known that all 14 members of one family had a hereditary blood disease. Oh, doctor, they pleaded, we want just one more, but we, how can we prevent him having, we, we, we want just one more child, how can we prevent him having we, we? Or chwe chwe, as it's called in Ga, or nui dudui in Ewe, ahuntutu in chui, him kom hepepe in Krobo Dangwe, Amosane in Hausa, Dobakotri in Dagbani, and it is called Pa in Kasena Nankani, or in Yoruba, they know it as Arumolegun or Lakuribe. Oh, doctor, how can we be 100% sure that our next child will not have this disease? They kept asking. This is a question I'm going to address with you. But to start with, and you'll be asking this question, I'm sure, why after 12 children do these parents want yet another child? Answer. Looking at the picture again of the family in the British Medical Journal, you will observe that of the eight surviving children out of 12, six were girls and two boys. They were desperate to have at least one more boy. Hence the question, doctor, how can we have one more and be sure that he will not suffer as we do and the rest of the family do? Turning first to the mother of 12, I said to her, you have inherited from your father something that stiffens your blood cells at the same time as your mother has given you the same something. I have come to call it ache. It's an ache something or, or an ache code or an ache gene in the formation of red blood protein called hemoglobin. So if your father gave you ache and your mother also gave you ache, I will call you ache ache. So you have ache ache condition, double ache. Nobody aches in the rainy season without a father contribution plus a mother contribution. I would like you to repeat that after me. Nobody suffers from cold season rheumatism or sickle cell disease without inheriting an ache code from the father plus an ache code from the mother. One ache code is not enough to tip somebody into an aching uh, crisis. When you are going to become pregnant, only one of your two ache codes is passed on to the child. And that ache code happens to join that of your husband as well, because he's ache, ache. And all his sperm contain one ache code. Your egg contains one half of all the codes you possess in your genes. And so does the sperm of your husband. Turning to the husband now, I said to him, you have also received ache codes from both father and mother, making you ache, ache. As neither your father nor your mother ached in the rainy season, they must both have been norm ache, because norm always protects the carrier from aching. Everybody, for any of our heritable con uh, conditions, everybody has two codes from the parents, whether it be skin color or the um, hemoglobin or the um, blood group 
or, or beauty, you always have a contribution from father and mother. So a person who is ache ache can obtain the ache from father and also from the mother. It just happens that the parents of this couple did not ache, but they must therefore have an ache hiding in the phenotype, if you like, the composition in order to be able to pass one on to the children. So the father was norm ache and the mother also norm ache. Remember this, when you are passing your ache genes to the children, you do not give both of your aches to the child, otherwise the child would end up with four aches. Let's go over this again, because I want you to get it straight. Your parents who never had Nwiwi must have been norm ache, norm gene plus ache gene, to have been able to pass the ache genes to make you to have ache ache, to pass on the ache genes to make you have ache ache. The non-aching parents are said to be carriers or traits. You have one norm gene for hemoglobin formation and an ache gene for hemoglobin formation. That is what I tell somebody who has a sickle cell trait. They do not know unless I tend I test the blood. Turning to the husband now, I said to him, you have also received ache codes from both father and mother, making you ache, ache. As neither your father nor your mother ached in the rainy season, they must both have been norm ache, because norm always protects the carrier from aching. But how do I know that your parents were norm ache? Answer, because they must have possessed an ache code to pass on to you. And as they themselves did not ache, they only had one ache each. Just as your wife's eggs contain just one of her two ache codes, so your millions of sperm contain one ache code and not two. Otherwise, you and your wife would be passing on four ache codes to your children. I hope you get this. You are both ache ache and your parents were norm ache and norm ache and they didn't know about it. If you have brothers and sisters who do not ache, they may be norm norm or norm ache because your parents who are norm ache can only pass on one of their two codes to the children. If the father passes on norm code and the mother norm code, the child will have norm code and will not have norm norm and will not have any problem at all. Those who receive an ache from a parent and a norm from the other parent also will not ache and there will be norm ache. Indistinguishable from those who are norm norm except by blood tests. This is very, very, very important. So how can I convince you that the further children that you want are going to have ache, ache, a disease. One way of doing it is the canard. This is a device which I had um, produced to show that uh, um, ache, ache, marrying ache, ache, will always end up with ache, ache children. Let me explain it in this way. <coughs> All humanity are 
broadly divided into three groups with respect to hemoglobin formation, this particular hemoglobin formation. Those who are norm-norm, in other words, have not inherited any code uh, which will stiffen the cells from any parent. Those who are norm-ache, who do not ache, but who have inherited one code from a parent and a norm code from the other. And those like your parents, uh, uh, like you, the parents of your children, uh, who have inherited an A code from both. So you have norm, 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 ache, and ache, ache. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you have children. You have had 12 children from 11 pregnancies. I'm going to demonstrate to you what happens. I have produced dice which represent our phenotypes. This egg, egg is a dice where every surface has an egg. This is you and that is your wife. When you're going to have children, this is what happens. You have ache, ache. Second pregnancy, what will happen when an ache, ache man has a second child with his wife? Ache, ache. The third pregnancy, eight ache. The fourth pregnancy, ache ache. And so it went on until the eleventh pregnancy produced eight ache. But you remember your the fifth pregnancy produced twins. What happened there? Two eggs of you, the mother, and two sperm of you, the father. What happened at conception? You had an ache, ache, a girl, and an ache, ache, girl happened to be female. So, what is the answer? to the question which you posed, how can we prevent our next child having an ache, ache syndrome? The answer is you can't because every time you conceive you will have ache, ache children. Now there are six possible combinations of matings of those who are norm norm, norm ache and ache ache. So if I got a patient who is ache ache and wants to get married and asks me of the chances of disease in the children, I take the ache, ache as a lady who meets a man who may be norm, norm or norm, ache. So let's see what happens when an ache, ache person marries a norm, ache person. You see that it is a gamble because we now have an ache, ache child. A patient marries somebody who is perfectly well and you find that the first child is ache, ache. But you could have a child who doesn't ache at all, as you can see.
when you throw the canard. So what advice do I give them? I tell them that uh, if you do not know the phenotype of the person that you are going to marry, you better check. You say you want somebody uh, who will give you a child who does not ache. The only way that this can happen is when you get a spouse who is norm norm, as you can show. However many children you have, none of these will be ache ache. They will all be norm ache. And it is important to explain to the children you have who are norm ache what I'm doing now, the chances of illness in the future. So ache ache marrying norm ache is not a certainty of avoiding ache ache disease. It's a genetic gamble. The next group is norm norm marrying ache ache. We have shown that all the children are going to be norm ache. Now, the commonest event is when two people who are perfectly well marry and some of the children have disease and others not. This is an example of my own parents. My father married um, a lady from Odumase Krobo, my hometown. They had 11 children. Three of us had ache ache. Four had norm norm and four norm ache. There was no way of distinguishing the norm ache from the norm norm. And this can be shown again here Norm ache father and norm ache mother. You may have norm norm and you have norm ache. You have another norm ache, another norm norm, and another norm ache. So again, those who want to be absolutely sure, certain, that when they know that they are norm ache, they do not have an ache ache child, will have to marry somebody who is norm norm. And this can be demonstrated again as a norm ache man who is healthy, even an athlete, um, marries a norm norm individual, none of the children will end up ache ache. If a norm ache person marries an ache ache person, that is also a, a gamble, a genetic gamble. Because although the norm ache person may give a norm code to the child, the ache ache a person is giving an ache all the time. So you may have the first child is norm ache, but subsequent children it could be ache ache. This is where voluntary family size limitation is very important. You can show that if you have a norm ache child, it's um, not a guarantee that further children are going to be norm ache. To be absolutely certain, as you asked, how can I stop this happening in my children? If you're norm ache, you marry a norm norm. And if you're ache ache, 
you marry a norm norm to be absolutely certain. If you norm ache and you marry another norm ache, there is the possibility that the first four children could be ache ache. I had an unfortunate family in Ghana where the father and mother were entirely healthy. The first child was born and had sickle cell anemia, ache, ache. The second child, a boy, also had sickle cell anemia, ache, ache. The third child had sickle cell anemia, ache, ache. The fourth child, another boy, had sickle cell anemia, ache, ache. They were furious because somebody had told them uh, that there was only a one in four chance of having the disease. That is not true. That is a genetic gamble. So you have to check and make sure that there is no ache in um, your phenotype. The thing to do uh, is to check which hemoglobin con um, constitutes the ache. For instance, there are some doctors who know only about sickle cell hemoglobin. So they check for only sickle hemoglobin, which is wrong. There are a number of other hemoglobins apart from sickle hemoglobin that can cause ache ache disease when they are joined up to an ache gene. And so the doctor must do a sickle test. If it is positive, you are carrying a sickle ache gene. If it is negative, it does not mean that you are not carrying an ache gene. They should go ahead and find other ache genes like beta thalassemia, which if inherited with sickle hemoglobin will give you sickle cell beta thalassemia disease, ache, ache. They should check for hemoglobin C, which is not a sickle hemoglobin, but if joined to sickle gene will give you sickle cell hemoglobin C disease. They should check for hereditary persistence of fetal hemoglobin, hemoglobin F, which when inherited to get, together with sickle hemoglobin will give you sickle cell hemoglobin F disease. They should make sure that if there is no sickle cell gene at all, the patient does not have hemoglobin C. This can be found with hemoglobin electrophoresis because you can have ache C joined to ache C to have what is called homozygous hemoglobin C disease, that is CC. This is very important and what I do now is to give every family I see six of these dyes. Three for each sex. You have norm norm uh, dyes, norm ache dyes, and ache ache. So in the family you can play with the children. If you know that a child is Six is a trait, that's norm ache. You ask him or her to throw the dice with another six is a trait, norm ache, to see how often um, ache, ache is likely to come up. Stressing to them and the parents that the thing is a gamble if you think that norm it's going, to, it's going to come up um, all the time. Parents who are norm ache and whose children do not have ache ache, 
must identify those who have knob ache and advise them about the chances of hereditary disease in their offspring because a grandfather could have a grandchild who is ache ache when he knew he knew himself that he was carrying an ache gene and did not advise his children and grandchildren. Another reason why it is very important to make sure that ache ache offspring do not arise is that some developed countries use um, very powerful painkillers in treating these patients. Some of them have given them morphine, others have given them heroin, and some of the patients have become addicted. Intelligent patients could be addicted through the way they are treated. If you don't want any of your children or grandchildren to be given extremely powerful painkillers, you can, through the CANAD um, demonstration, uh, explain how they can avoid 100% having ache ache children. CANAD um, stands for Konote Ahulu Norm Ache Dice, and these are available free to those whom I counsel. Use laboratories that are reliable, that are able to find whether you are carrying an ache gene or not. Sickle cell test alone is not enough. You must go on to find whether you have hemoglobin C or beta thalassemia or uh, uh, hemoglobin D or even hemoglobin Kolebu or hemoglobin also Christian's book which we were able to find. I know that some have asked, well, we are both norm ache. We know that our first child is ache ache. We want to have a second child and make sure that it's not ache ache. Can we test? the child and if it's ache ache abort the child? The answer is quite simple. There are many ache ache children and adults who are more intelligent than those who do not have norm ache. And some of the patients themselves know this and they know that they are achievers. We have been able to arrange uh, conferences, international conferences for sickle cell disease achievers. We had one uh, at the Royal Society of Medicine in London, and we have another one, you can see the brochure, which I'll show, um, in Accra, where uh, ache, ache achievers, achievers um, had told us how they had been able to uh, achieve uh, in spite of the difficulties that they have health-wise. So that is out of the question for a number of families. Some ache ache families, um, ache ache achievers have been the breadwinners in their families when the non-ache um, siblings have not been able to achieve anything. So the important thing is to avoid ache, ache, children um, arriving in the first place or limit the size of the family when you are fortunate enough to escape the syndrome. Thank you very much and um, if I can be of any help uh, to anybody in um, limiting the size of the sickle cell disease uh, burden in the uh, future generations, I would be 
extremely happy to help.